Today, we are joined by Nijmi Zakia Zarinko. She's an organizer from Pennsylvania, the co-founder of Put People First Pennsylvania, a working class based building human rights organization. She's also the chair of the Pennsylvania Poor People's Campaign and National Call for Moral Revival. Nijmi, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, great. So as we speak, uh, protests are erupting in cities and towns across the U.S. Uh, to demand justice for George Floyd and for other victims of police brutality and also calling for an end to racist police violence. Um, there's also been a lot of discussion about how these protests and this rebellion is not just about these latest kind of atrocious acts of police violence, but these protests are a result of, you know, 400 years of institutionalized oppression against black people in this country. Um, and one of the ways this is very evident, and I think it's an area that Put People First works kind of tirelessly on, is about access to healthcare. So wondering if you can kind of talk about this moment, this moment of uprising, and how uh, we see the systemic racism in the healthcare system. Yeah, so thank you. What I would say about that is that here at Put People First PA, we really see the crisis of state violence um, that is happening right now and is happening continuously uh, as connected to the healthcare crisis because honestly, state violence has many fronts. Um, there's violence against our communities uh, in the form of police abuse and murder. There's violence against our communities in the form of denial of healthcare. Uh, there's violence against our communities in the form of uh, denial of the right to housing. So, we actually see it as really connected to the question of state violence and you know the the state murders of black and indigenous people and other people of color are the most visible form of state violence one of the most visible forms of state violence but there's also many 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 forms of state violence that we are dealing with as the working class in uh, the u.s uh yesterday i was at a protest here in philadelphia pennsylvania uh, about uh, George Floyd, and I talked about my own experience um, with state violence, um, having been profiled by the police, having been harassed by the police, having guns pulled on me by the police, having guns pulled on me by off-duty under, you know, off-duty police out of uniform, uh, having dealt with militias, having dealt with uh, 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 police and military in occupied Palestine um, and settlers. So. There's a lot of direct experience that I personally have had with this type of state violence. Um, and what I wanted to do in my remarks yesterday is to make the connection between state violence in all its forms. The state violence uh, that separates families at the border uh, here in the U.S., but also through the child welfare system, uh, as I said, that denies us access to health care and housing and water and food as human rights. Um, and facilitates private profiteering at the expense of meeting human needs. You know, that's, that's really structural state violence is that our state is set up to facilitate the private profit making of the ruling class. And we can see that in this pandemic very clearly that the ruling class has been bailed out and the working class has been given a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And that is state violence. And so what is the participants participation looks like of Put People First and other working class movements in response to um, the murder of George Floyd and these uh, protests that are erupting. So you mentioned that you participated yesterday, but are there any concrete demands uh, from these movements? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we actually um, developed a whole set of uh, demands around COVID when the pandemic hit uh, that are uh, sort of incorporate all of our healthcare demands and also kind of look at the broader situation. Uh, there's been a lot of organizing uh, pre-pandemic that we're connected to through the PA Poor People's Campaign that particularly relates to uh, prison uh, and mass incarceration. And so it's been an ongoing demand to free vulnerable people from prison. Uh, you know, before this most recent set of rebellions. And so we're continuing um, to push for that as well as uh, as we face uh, a crisis in budgets across the U.S. due to 
uh, the fact that we have a completely consumer-based economy that, that relies on everyday people purchasing uh, commodities, and that's 90% of our gross domestic product. So every state and the, you know, at every level is facing a very severe budget shortfall. And what we're demanding is that that budget not be balanced on the back of the working class. Um, but, you know, that, that police, for example, right, the institution of policing, that money be taken from that budget uh, and transferred into budgets for education, healthcare, housing, and other things. Great. And as you've mentioned, kind of this latest uprising is taking place in the context of a global pandemic, in the context of kind of the rapid spread of COVID-19, uh, during which uh, the U.S. has been one of the most impacted countries. Um, and this pandemic has also revealed a lot of the structural problems in the U.S. healthcare system, which, again, is an issue that uh, Put People First works a lot on. And so I was wondering if you could kind of talk about some of these bigger structural issues that we see at play right now. Sure. Well, I mean, for example, in Pennsylvania, the state where I live, which has 13 million people in it, um, we've experienced the closure of eight hospitals uh, just since the beginning of 2019. Uh, in, you know, and, and they continue to close even during the pandemic. Um, this has to do very much with uh, hospital takeovers by private equity and global corporations that are you know, interested in making a profit. And when they buy a hospital, just like they would buy any other asset, and it isn't profitable to them, they close it down. Um, and this is uh, one of the things that's impacting us during this pandemic, uh, a structural problem of having healthcare as a commodity, as a private good, as opposed to a public good, which is the essential problem with healthcare in the United States. Um, and so we've been uh, really working around these hospital closings. We've been calling for universal testing. Uh, once again, we're also dealing with the fact that testing kits are being just, you know, purchased um, on the market. And so there's price gouging happening with, with actually getting access to testing. So we've called on our governor to direct production of testing kits. Um, and to direct production of personal protective equipment for all healthcare workers and all frontline workers, all quote unquote essential workers. So directing production of those things. And we've called for reopening closed hospitals. We've called for the expansion of Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid is the healthcare uh, program that is for uh, low income people in the US. Uh, and right now there are 1.5 million people in our state being thrown off of their employer-based health care. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be signing up for Medicaid. So we've called on our governor to immediately expand Medicaid to all PA residents and to bring private hospitals and health care facilities under public control for the duration of the crisis and beyond. Um, so we, you know, calling on these, uh, for these measures, uh, because this is a, a very uh, intense time, you know, it's a global recession, depression layered on top of a pandemic. And we feel like these would be the most uh, common sense measures to, to actually take to keep the working class safe and to get us through this in addition to, um, you know, broader demands being made by the Poor People's Campaign for a guaranteed income uh, for paid sick leave and, and all of these things that we also have in our COVID demands. Um, and this is what I mean when I say that, you know, the, the, what the state has done uh, at the federal level and now at the state level where you can see also austerity budgets being put forward, for example, in the, in the city of Philadelphia, is to focus efforts on uh, bailing out corporations, bailing out the ruling class, um, taking our money, our tax dollars, and using it to ensure profitability uh, for a uh, ruling class as opposed to providing a guaranteed income to get us through this crisis, providing health care for all, um, you know, uh, on the eve of this crisis and providing uh, what, it would, what would be necessary to make sure that we don't have to go out and go to work and get sick, 
but we also don't have to stay home and starve because we don't have wages. And that's the false choice that's being, uh, you know, put forward right now in the, in the U.S. The healthcare struggle that we're engaged in, you know, we're, we're engaged in it both because it is a, a basic fundamental human need, but also because we see it as a weakness of the global ruling class. Uh, we see that healthcare is a strength for the working class uh, in terms of everyone needs it and everyone, you know, has an interest in securing it uh, and an interest in believing that it is actually a human right, which is so, so much even more clear since the pandemic that, you know, it's all connected and anything that affects any one of us can affect all of us. And if anyone doesn't have access to what they need and have their right to healthcare secured, it can affect all of us. Um, and also that the ruling class sees healthcare as a place to kind of dump their, their capital. Uh, they see it as a re recession proof, uh, place where they can continue to invest. And so that makes it a potential point of leverage for us. And it's something that healthcare really is also a global issue. It's a global struggle. It unites the working class, uh, internationally. And so, um, you know, I know that we have learned a lot from uh you know looking at what what the the movements of working class people and the revolutions of working class people around the world have been able to achieve in healthcare right it's not just achieved as a policy solution it was achieved through you know revolutionary change and we've learned a lot from that uh and we know that there are a lot of places where um folks are uh, have achieved things are still in in the process of moving um you know, movements forward and are in some cases are trying to hold on to things that they gains that they've made. Uh, but, but healthcare is really a, a global uh, struggle and it's a point of unity for the global working class. That's all we have time for and thank you for watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,